Well, hollow grains. See what I did there? Today's the day many of you have been waiting for. Today we're going to be turning Simply Neological into a monstrous creature. And I mean that in the nicest way possible, I promise. But Jakey, maybe you should use nicer words then. No! Don't tell me what to do! But I'll listen to you sometimes. Not all the time. Just sometimes. For those of you who don't know, Simply Neological, also known as Christine with no H, has a really fun but also educational channel. What I love about her channel is the genuineness of her personality. She's absolutely fun-loving, and I love the fact that she has her own drink slave, which is known as Ben. Ben! 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 Who brings her tea while she's doing her videos. In many ways, the direction I decided to take my channel was thanks to her. I went from purely tutorial to having fun with crafts instead. So if you don't know Christine, I'll leave her links in the description box below. I'm pretty sure you're in for a treat. And by the way, so many of you grains, I mean thousands of you grains, went to Sophia Nygaard and let her know that I had turned her into a creature sculpture. And so this time I want to make sure because you grains were very insistent. Absolutely do it again. <laughs> So I'll leave Christine's most latest video in the description box below. Feel free to let her know. Nerdy Crafter turned you into a creature. That would mean the world to me. And yes, thanks to your effort, Sophia Nygaard did see my thumbnail, but I'm not sure if she saw the video. At least I know she likes the thumbnail on Twitter. That's a step close. As much as I am known here in the Salt Shaker family for being the bringer of salt, Simply Neological is known for loving her hollow. Hollow, 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 hollow. And recently, congratulations, Christine, on releasing Hollow Taco, and it was sold out everywhere. Hollow Taco is her own brand of nail polish. And even though I couldn't grab one online, I sent Salty Crafter all the way to VidCon to pick one up from the booth. As you can see, we have our own Hollow Taco kit. And yes, I had to pick them all up. So let's take a look at what's inside, and ooh, that is so hollow. My eyes burning with, with rainbows, rainbow burning my eyes. So in this kit, we get five different pots. I did not open them because I wanted to do that with you grains. And let's take them all out. Ooh, that is that is really nice packaging. I absolutely love the outside of the packaging as well. I don't know why I love packaging, I just do. And we have the shiny black icons versus the lesser shiny black outside. I'm very good at describing things. And the label is definitely also hollow. I love that she is on brand. Just add a hollow taco. Now I'm slightly scared to open these because I tend to ruin box flaps. I'm gonna try to be as gentle as possible. Success. And the first top coat that we have. So that is pretty. So you can see the difference between these two. The first one on this side is way smaller little tiny hollows. And here you have a lot more pronounced pieces. All right, I'm absolutely wrong because I don't have my glasses. But these ones here seem to be the tinsel type hollow glitter. And now you see the difference with the third one. Bigger hollow, little, little, or little or hollow. Wow, can't talk. And so these are the three sizes of hollow that we get. Next we have two bottom coats. One in a gorgeous deep blue, and the other one in black. Now, some of you might be asking, why am I showing nail polish? No, I will not be nail polishing my nails, painting my nails. There are so many videos out there and reviews about how great quality they are for your nails. My question is, can we paint with them? Yes, I will be using them to paint the sculpture we're going to make. In the same way that we did Sophia Nygaard's sculpture, we need to look at what makes Christine, Christine. On Reddit, I asked your grains what kind of sculpture base should Simply Neological be. There were so many requests to turn her into a cat-type creature, but it just didn't feel ferociously monstrous enough. Until I scrolled down to a particular comment that requested that she be turned into a T-Rex. Yes, you heard it. The pun, T-Rex. The reason for that is because Christine does get gifted tea in her videos and she looks absolutely ecstatic when she receives them. Is that tea? Next we have elements of Ben. I don't want to create another creature for Ben, so I'm going to have to find a very specific kind of creative way to include Ben so that we know he's there, but without creating a second creature. And of course, I cannot, again, include her two kitties, Xyler and Menchie. I haven't figured out exactly how to do it, but it's brewing in my head. 
And of course, many of you greens, again, were saying that I have to include the sock monster in there. And of course, I love the sock monster idea, and the way that she was walking at some point reminded me of a dinosaur, and that's why the T-Rex pun was just absolutely... Here are today's weapon of choice. Sculpey Palmer Clay. Not affiliated, not sponsored, it's just my favorite kind of clay to work with. And I did promise myself that I don't want to spend 40 plus hours to make a sculpture, so I am giving myself a way smaller environment. Which means it should still take me 40 hours to paint. So the first thing I decided to do was paint the base in red. Because a lot of things are going to be dark colored, I figured red as a base would make things pop out a lot more. And the paint I'm using is a kind of glittery sheen to it, but don't worry, we're going to take out the airbrush because I am so, uh, I am so obsessed with airbrushing now. And now to prep our surface. Oh, what did you do? What'd you do? What did you do? We're going to take a sharp tool and make lines of indents in there. That's going to help make sure that the clay, once we bake it, is going to stick to something that has scratch marks on it. For the base, I thought long and hard what I really wanted to do. And so the most logical thing that came to mind is not just the outdoors, but a kind of absolutely absurd fantasy outdoors that would have quite a few of the elements that make Christine simply illogical. So I'm actually preparing a space for a hollow river, and the surrounding area is going to be made out of grass. Cause we're going outdoors, baby. I don't know what that is, but it's something now. Just in case you can't see, it is a little pearlescent. In case you're wondering how I mix huge blocks of clay, I use a pasta machine. This is quite the struggle. Otherwise, it would take too long to mix it with my own hands. And here's the gorgeous blue we're left with. I have to be really honest with you, Grains. Even though I've made hundreds of sculptures, starting a new project still does get me nervous. And I always have to remember, this is clay. This is very forgivable. Which means that if I mess up, that's totally okay because I can rework it and fix it as much as I want. And so right now what I'm going to start making is the head. I am really nervous starting with the head. Usually I get the body going and then I go for the head. But because the head is going to be one of the most important pieces, since it's going to be the biggest part on the body, I feel like I should be spending most of my time on it. And since I don't want to waste too much clay, I'm using a ball of foil paper. I tried using an epoxy glue because I wanted pieces to stick more firmly together, but the front of the box says 5 minutes. The back of the box says 30 minutes. So I'm just going to skip that part entirely and start over. Those of you who wonder, the trick is keep smoothing. Once you keep smoothing, you'll get a uniform shape and it'll start looking like an actual piece of clay. All right, now that we have our basic head shape, let's start putting other pieces of clay to give it a jaw, to make sure that it has a snout. And in this case, I wanna make sure that this creature has an underbite. I am very well aware that Christine does not have an underbite, but I just think it's going to add to the monstrous cool factor to it. Now that the head is done in terms of rough shapes, it's time for the eyes, because the eyes are the window to your soul. And maybe a little salt too. If we look at Christine's pictures, her eyes have a greenish tint to it. I'm saying greenish because through the pictures, there seems to be a little bit of brown in there. So what I'm going to be taking is flat-backed cabochons. These are domes made out of glass. And I'm going to put the first layer, which is going to be black, and then we're going to use nail polish. Yes, as you can see over here, we're going to be using iridescent nail polish. I don't want to put hollow just yet because I don't want it to be tacky. I want this piece to be something that you would proudly display so it has elements of you, but really, I, I don't want it to be tacky at all. The reason we're putting iridescent is so that when we look at the eyes in different angles, it has a cute shine to it. And I'm going to go ahead and make two different versions. I feel like having a cat like when their eyes are retracted, which is kind of lizardy, might actually work. But just in case, I'm also going to make one that is round if we want to go the cute route. All right, now for the moment of truth. I am so worried. These are always kind of like a surprise to me, but fun, but worrisome, because words, please come out. All right, so let's see the lizardy type eyes. That is really pretty. I love the way this looks. So we still get a kind of kitty cat, lizardy kind of look, 
And now for the supposedly cute ones. Oh, these are cute. So if they were facing this way. I'm not sure it's very T-Rexy, but let's find out. So here's Christine so far. Let's see what the lizardy ones somewhat look like. Oh, I like that. Oh, I love it so much. And the cute one. Uh, no. I'm getting Barney vibes. I love you. We're not doing that to Christine. All right, so I feel like here is a good spot. Yes. And for added scale texture, I'm just using this little mesh thing, which I bought garlic, and it was it was wrapping the garlic. So all you have to do is just press it around where you want it. And ta-da! You get some nice random scale-like textures. So now that our T-Rex head base is done, there's still a lot more detail to go. And that's why I went to the dollar store and I picked up some fake nails. I would love to use these fake nails as kind of horns. Wait, do these things melt in the oven? Alright, I obviously didn't think this through. Maybe I should use my own nails. I'm just joking, okay? So what I might try to do is maybe make the indents and then glue them on after the whole thing is baked. Just, just to stay safe. Because here on Nerdy Crafter, safety first. Alright, how do these things feel? So these are some pretty cutely decorated nails, but I'm gonna get rid of the decoration and definitely use the hollow taco to, to get them looking even cooler. And this is what they look like. They are obviously not filed, so if I want sharp pointy things, I gotta make them myself. Instead of spending forever ever to file these nails, I'm really curious if we can just use a nail clipper. And the answer is... <gasps> it works. Victory is ours. All right, moment of truth. We're going to test out the hollow taco right away on top of the acrylic nail. I don't know if it's supposed to work with acrylic, ac acrylic nails, but I'm gonna give it a try anyways. All right, here's the first opening. And, ooh, that is really rich. I don't know the first thing about nail polish, but let's assume I do. And, all right, just to be clear, my hands were dirty, so it's probably trying to struggle against my fingers. All right, so I'm struggling so bad painting these nails because I was like, why is it taking more than one coat? And then I tested out the hollow taco on my own nail and it just took one coat, it's super creamy. But on these acrylic nails, it's just flying everywhere. I messed up my desk, I messed up my hands, dishonor on me, and dishonor on my coat. So I'm gonna keep struggling until I get those nails real deep blue. While the nail polish is still a little tacky, I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit of textures with indents and hope that they stay. And me. Good. I love the texture on these nails. It kind of reminds me of the texture in dragons that you would find in Dragon Quest. So, Kira Toriyama, this is for you. So my idea for using these nails is to make indents in the front part of the T-Rex. I know it's gonna start looking like a dragon, but it's a T-Rex, you know, like, like the tea she drinks. Hear that. And don't worry, everything's gonna come together as we go on. So I'm going to make the indents for where the nails would go and then remove them because I read online that acrylic nails are very flammable. We don't, we don't want any messes here. Or do we? Now it is time for our first bake and I shouldn't be nervous, but I usually am because the baking gods, they're quite the thing. So let's put our hands together and pray to the baking gods. Dear baking gods of evermore, Please protect my piece from cracks, burns, and falling limbs. And also, stop breaking my stuff! The baking gods have not forsaken us. So keeping in with the theme of blue, the body is also going to be a solid blue, but don't forget we're going to be adding a lot of paint details once the body has been shaped. The burb is very agreeable. And he's gone. And he's back. Welcome back. Did you miss me? Oh, that's sweet of you. Oh, that's a hit and run! Oh, he didn't run. Oh, there he goes! <laughs> so, because the name of her nail polish is a royal tea blue, I should probably stop it here and call it a sock T-Rex. Look at that. That would make my life so much easier. But we all know I am not about the easy life. 
The bottom part has to embody. I'm sure you like that pun very much. And also, Christine is a huge fan of tea. So again, we're still sticking with the tea Rex Royal Tea Blue. You see where this is going? There's a lot of tea going up. And so the body itself is going to be a chibi type. I'm not going for anything realistic because realism is not always that fun. Let me get no ant invasion. Get out. Get out. Hey. Let me get out. I, I, I love her so much. I love the little raptor type T Rexy hand. Mm. We're going to be adding a lot more detail. And sometimes sculptures speak to you and they know the direction they want to head. I always do two coats of glossy taco. Okay. She knows what she wants. Who am I to tell Christine no? I am nobody. Just a grain of salt. So what we're going to be doing now is taking another piece of small clay and making our little tea uh, the cup. And Ben usually brings her Starbucks. So since Ben is an extremely important component when it comes to bringing tea, this little teacup is not going to have the Starbucks logo, but instead it's going to have a different logo. absolutely love that little tea cup because I definitely got inspired by the merch that they had made which was limited edition and the other merch I'm going to be inspired by is the ones that have Menchi and Xyler. Being a cat mom and myself, I definitely had to add these little cuties in this sculpture. And one of my favorite videos was her taking both Menchi and Xyler out on these different carriagey things. You can express the crazy cat lady or cat man in you. Don't worry, I don't think that's crazy at all. <laughs> I would probably do it myself too. But since I don't want it to be overcrowded, I am definitely getting inspired by putting Xyler on the outside since he's a little more adventurous. And yes, I want to make a backpack. Never heard of that. I got a cat in my backpack. It's a new life pack. To put Menchi right on the back. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that, so we're going to be testing this mold over here. Wow. Oh no, 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 no. Dang it. I stopped working on it for the night because I was like, that's it for me. I'm gonna take a little break. I come back to this. Not only did one arm fall off, a little T arm also fell off. I'm gonna repair this and I think it's going to be time to do a pre-bake to make sure nothing else falls off. Thanks for nothing, overnight guts. You have forsaken me. What you do? All right, so here we go for bake number two. It, think of baking as saving your progress, and, and you can add detail later on again if you need to. But for now, put your hands together, and let's pray to the baking gods. Dear baking gods of evermore. Stop messing with me! One of the things I really wanted to do is make a hollow river. And as you can see from my sketch, I really wanted this to happen. So what I did is I actually had a tiny little bottle that I bought from Japan last time I went and use a translucent clay in order to make the nozzle of that bottle because it needs to look like a nail polish bottle. My brother gave me the great idea of actually making the hollow river come out of one of the hollow taco little mini bottles. So as I was saying before, salt hit the fan and all the arms and that they just felt that they did the falling. What I really want to do is the backpack and put Menchi on the inside. But the only way I can do a dome is by taking this mold over here, which is a full circle sphere. Yeah. Put resin inside, which is kind of a plasticky glass in liquid form swirling it around and hope that the resin sticks more on the edges so that we have a really good half dome. I'm a huge fan of the resin from Sophie and Toffee, not sponsored, not affiliated, but they have a pretty good clear one. Now is the moment of truth. I haven't tried it myself, but I have seen some Instagram posts do this exact same technique. Hopefully it works. And yes. The only issue I have with this one is that there are huge bubbles. So I'm going to keep trying until I get non-bubbles, no bubbles. English number one. 
When making the backpack, I initially thought from the video that it was a solid turquoise. But the second it was turned around, I was like, oh, well, here, here goes an extra bit of work because it's half turquoise, half black. And for the purpose of this little backpack, I made an absolutely petrified Menchie because she don't like to go outside. And I did exaggerate the colors just a little bit because they need to be seen. For the backpack, I took black clay and pearlescent turquoise, put them on top of each other, but I needed the background to be black, so I removed just a little bit of the front part, added our little Menchie, and put our glass dome. Of course I wanted to add as much detail, but at the same time I wanted to keep with this type of cartoony feel that I initially started with the whole thing. One last bit of detail is missing before we put it for the final bake. Since over here we're going to have our hollow little river, wow, could not remember my words. Since it's also supposed to symbolize her intro, nail polish is going to be dripping from here all the way down, but we have an empty space over here. So I figured it would be just the right place to add a flower. So we're going to be making a resin flower in the colors of orange, green, blue, and pink. Bonus points for you if you know where this flower is from. It's an homage for one of her favorite topics. It's for Troom Troom, by the way. Looks like someone's brain is imploding. That's my brain when I watch Troom Troom. After surgically having to put the backpack on, I think I'm pretty ready to bake it now. Yes! We are at our final bake, which means we have to be serious and you know what must be done. Stop breaking my stuff! Now the only thing left to do is put nail polish inside that little bottle, make our hollow river, and then paint on the details. The hollow does not want to go into bottle. Gonna have to figure out a plan B. Fun fact, Christine is obsessed with two coats of hollow taco, or top coats, hollow top coats. Even when she was playing with a dinosaur. Break it. <laughs> You're gonna paint the nails hollow. That's why I'm here. <laughs> what a beautiful shade of dinosaur blue. Wow. Here is Christine in all her glory, despite the fact that I've been working on this sculpture for about a month. Yep, check the Reddit post that I, that I posted. I have to say this is probably one of my favorite sculptures just because of the amount of detail I was able to put in there. I totally had a chance to meet Christine when we were at VidCon, but being the shy, shy little grain that I am, I totally did not ask her for a picture together because I don't like bothering people. So the question is, did it actually happen? I guess only I know, Ace of Clay and Casey Golden. If there's one thing I want to restart, maybe I'll work on it on the side, is the nail polish, just the nail polish little container thing. I am not savvy on what nail polish containers look like because I've never had a manicure. And growing up, I grew up with brothers who didn't paint nails. So I'm probably going to work on that later on because I feel like it's probably the piece that ruins everything. So I'll, I'll fix it. Don't worry, I'll fix it. Please remember to go and tell Christine on her latest video Nerdy Crafter turned you into a monster. I would absolutely love for her to see this, but I will be sending it to her P.O. box. We have to pray to the postage gods that she gets it in one piece. Or maybe I should just drive to her P.O. box. Today's shoutouts go to Kim Lloyd, Griffin Dork 1965, Sad Pancakes, Emil 88, Megapedia, Mumu, Huang Cindy, and Miss Video Dame. If you want a shout out in my videos, don't forget to hashtag Notification Squad in the comment section below within the first five hours of a video's release, or hashtag NerdyCraft on Instagram or Twitter anytime with any of your creations. If you want to watch the previous turning a YouTuber into a monstrous sculpture, 
make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch something salty, because this was way too sweet for you, and you need to live on the salt, make sure you check it down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.